Hi, everyone. I'm Ana Luisa Daño, and I'm the Program Director of Living Tongues Institute for Endangered Languages. Our presentation today is entitled Living Dictionaries, a Platform for the Indigenous Languages of the Americas. Here's an outline of what I'll be speaking about today. I'll provide a background of our work and who we are. I'll give you an overview of Living Dictionaries, as well as some recent statistics, features, and upcoming plans for the platform. And I'll give a tech demonstration of creating a new Living Dictionary with an entry. And at the end, we'll look at four existing Living Dictionaries for Indigenous Languages of the Americas. We'll look at Tudlo Saponi Monikin, Tepewa de Wewetla, Ipea, and Kalinago. So who are we at Living Tongues? We're a nonprofit research organization based in the US with researchers located around the globe. We stand at the intersection of linguistics and community activism. Along with documenting languages and publishing our scientific research, we support community activists through training and we raise awareness about endangered as well as underrepresented languages. Here is our current Living Dictionaries team. We have Diego Cordova Nieto based in Mexico, myself based in North Carolina in the US, Jacob Boydoin based in Taiwan, and Greg Anderson who's in Oregon in the US. So why build Living Dictionaries? Over 3,000 languages are likely to disappear this century unless we take action now. Over 200 Indigenous languages in North America are currently under threat. So we really find it's important to create a meaningful difference in our current generation. There is a strong need for comprehensive, accessible language materials. Communities need free tools to eliminate institutional barriers, as well as logistical, financial, and te technical barriers that might be stopping them from creating the tools that they need. We also aim to decolonize linguistics. Instead of seeing projects start from the top down, we really like to see grassroots projects rise from the bottom up, and we empower language activists on their journeys to create um, these resources, the living dictionaries. Our platform supports citizen science. We do that by offering STEM opportunities to everyone working on the platform. And we also prioritize racial equity by providing digital training and access to BIPOC communities. What are living dictionaries? Our platform allows language activists to create free multimedia online dictionaries and all levels of expertise are welcome. Here's our website, livingdictionaries.app. The website works in any browser on any device. It relies on the internet to work. Offline mode is a work in progress. Creators can seamlessly integrate audio, video, and images into their dictionaries. Data in a living dictionary belongs to the language community that created the dictionary, and our site operates under a source available, non-commercial license. Uh, living Dictionaries leverages the 21st century power of remote collaboration to create these digital resources that can serve language revitalization efforts now and in the future. So who exactly uses Living Dictionaries? Indigenous, Creole, and diaspora language activists, as well as other community stakeholders, such as advocates, educators, and leaders. Also researchers, scholars, and conservation scientists use the platform. Some people fall into all of these categories, and we support everyone who wants to create a living dictionary on the platform. Here's a look at the numbers. As of right now, in May 2023, we have 857 dictionary contributors who are active on the platform. They've built over 500 living dictionaries. Roughly half of those are public and available on our homepage, and roughly half are in private mode, uh, which means that people are just using them for internal community purposes only, and they don't want the public to see it, or they could be under construction. We currently have 185,000 dictionary entries and counting. 42,000 entries were added since January of this year. Our platform has really been growing exponentially uh, over the last few years. Some innovations in 2022, we rolled out export functionality, which I'll show you in one of the dictionaries shortly. So now all dictionary managers can export their data from the, any dictionaries that they're working on. They can also do video recording. So dictionary managers can upload, they can link or record new videos on the platform. We also have map coordinates and regions. Um, so that is under the settings of a living dictionary. Managers can add geopins and polygon areas for their language communities. And also we now have print view. Managers can print professional quality PDFs of their dictionaries. 
This was one of our top requests from people working on our platform. They wanted to be able to print their dictionaries, and now we offer that, and I'll show you this feature as well. Some of our upcoming plans for this year in 2023, um, we are, we're about to roll out senses this summer, so entries will now be able to include multiple senses. We'll soon have an Arabic interface. The platform is already available in 12 interface languages, and we'll be adding Arabic to that list soon. We'll be launching 30 new living dictionaries in the coming months, and we'll be updating our language sustainability toolkit to add more dictionary building stories and um, bring awareness to this platform. Now I'll provide you with a tech demonstration. So we're going to go on to livingdictionaries.app. I'm using the Chrome browser. You can use it in any browser. I'm using it on desktop right now, but you can use it on a tablet, on a smartphone, or a laptop. Here in the search bar, you can search for any language, and um, you can also explore the homepage map. Uh, to create a, an account on the website, it's very easy. Um, you just click on the top right-hand button, and you can create an account within a few seconds. I'm already logged in, so I can get to work on a new Living Dictionary right now. I'm going to hit the Create New Dictionary button, and I'm going to create a new Living Dictionary called Kanichana. This is for an endangered language of Bolivia with only a couple of speakers left. Incidentally, you could change the um, interface language at any point in this process. For example, if you're building uh, a living dictionary in Portuguese, you can switch away from English at any time. So th the name that I populate here uh, will automatically populate the URL. And since this language is an indigenous language of Bolivia, I'm going to add Spanish as one of the glossing languages and I can add an infinite number of glossing languages as well. This uh, language also has many different alternate names, so I will add two from my list right now. This language is also known as Kanesi, and it's also known as Wakiniano, so I will add those. Where is this language spoken? Um, it's spoken in uh, the department of Beni, so I will go ahead and add that and save the location. And I can add extra coordinates and regions as well, if the language is spoken in many different places. Here, I've just added the ISO code and the glotto code for this language. And I'm going to check some of these specific questions here. Is this dictionary spoken by a human, human community? Yes. Has the language community given you permission to make this dictionary? Yes. And um, I will add my answers here. I am not part of this community, but I am in contact with um, language activists in Bolivia who wish to create a living dictionary with the remaining speakers. And the last question that we ask is, is this dictionary for constructed language? And we say, no, this is not a constructed language. Now that we've created the living dictionary for Kanichana, we're going to create our first entry. So I'm just going to the Wikipedia page for Kanichana, and I'm going to look at some of the vocabulary that they list here. And I will be listing the word for maze, and I'll be sure to um, also copy paste the source. So I hit the blue add entry button here, and it shows you the entry view for this new word. This is the head word, and we also offer data fields for phonetic, English translation, Spanish translation, part of speech, semantic domain, dialect, scientific name, if it pertains to a particular species, plural form, noun class, morphology, interlinearization, notes, source, uh, where we can add a citation or a link, example sentence in Kanichana, as well as example sentences in English or Spanish. All of these data fields are actually optional. I'll just fill out a couple for the purposes of this demonstration. So we were looking at the word for maze. So I will add that in English. And we're going to add that in Spanish as well. OK. And then we are going to add a semantic domain. Since this pertains to food, we're going to add this tag for food. It also pertains to agriculture, so I'll add a tag for agriculture. We have a long list of semantic domains, which allow people to filter data once the data is tagged. Um, I'm going to skip these other data fields for now, and I'm going to show you how to upload a photo. So if I go to my desktop, I'm going to upload a photo for this, for this entry. 
all of these data fields and multimedia items can be edited at any time. I'm also going to add the source of the word. So we're taking this from this particular source. So I'm going to add that in source. And you will see that this will populate and go up further on the page. And I'm going to add a source for the image since I took it from uh, Creative Commons OpenVerse. So I'm going to copy the uh, source of this and also add that under photo credit. That way the word and the photo both have their credits. And now we've entered our first word and we can see it on the list view. I'm going to switch over to another living dictionary now to show you how we record audio. This is the Atlas Vio de Mayun Marca. This is a project coming from Peru in a region where Quechua Ayacucho is spoken. This is created by a team of Peruvian indigenous activists, and they are going to be recording audios for these uh, words here. I'll just show you how easy it is to record a word, and then I'll delete it since the fluent speakers will be recording it. So I'm going to select myself from the list. So here you could actually select an audio file. You can upload it from a previous recording that might you, you might have, or you can record directly on the platform, which I will do now. Chuspi. Now it's uploading to the cloud, and let's have a listen. Chuspi. Okay, that's pretty good. If I didn't like that, I could delete it. I could also download this file if I wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to close that. So as you can see, once there's data on the platform, it's really easy for a fluent speaker to go through and start recording um, all, all of the audio that's needed. So we do have teams working that way on the platform where some people are in charge of the text and images and other people are in charge of the pronunciations of the words. And then since I wanna delete those items, I'm gonna go ahead and delete them now. And as you can see, this is a very multilingual project. Uh, we have translations in multiple different languages. We have phonetic transcription and um, the scientific name in Latin, as well as uh, some uses. We have links to iNaturalist, which is another database about ecological knowledge. And there's a lot more that will be added as this project continues to grow. We can also view it on gallery view and have an idea of the images that are inside of this living dictionary. I'd like to showcase a couple more projects. So here is one project in North America that we've been working on collaboratively with um, the indigenous community. So this is Tudlo Saponi Monacan. This is a dormant language. Uh, it used to be spoken in North Carolina, Virginia, Ohio, and elsewhere. This is a Siouan language. So we've been working with the, with the community and several linguists to um, uh, basically revive this language based on archival recordings and older publications and any resources that we can find on this language. So now this is becoming one of the go-to sources for this language. Let's listen to a couple of recordings. So that's the word for a pair of ears. Let's listen to the word for hill. Heki. And we can also listen to sentences and phrases. Hey, mang tai kak itangse. So those are some examples of Tutelosaponi Monikin. We also have uh, more information about this project available if you click on the About tab here on the left sidebar. So you can read this and see some background and who's working on it. You can get a sense of the contributors here um, and grammar, which is currently empty, but we'll have more, more information in the future. Settings, if you're a manager, you can work on these settings for the language. And importantly, if you're a dictionary manager, you can export the data as a CSV spreadsheet. You can export images and the audio files, and you can also download a PDF of this particular dictionary. I'll show you a little bit more about the PDF side. So this is what it looks like in our print view. You could um, change the parameters here for printing. You can make uh, modifications about the size, the font, and everything. You can even have QR codes for the entries. You can generate a PDF very easily and use it offline in the classroom or elsewhere. Uh, importantly, you can also filter by, say, body parts, for example, or numerals or animals. And you can create PDFs of those too uh, if you want to generate uh, different lessons from this language. Another uh, beautiful living dictionary I'd like to show you today is called Tepewa de Wewetla. 
This is an indigenous Totonacan language from Mexico. So this living dictionary was built independently of us. Um, this was created by a research team who you can see here. This was composed of indigenous activists and um, a couple of scholars in Canada as well. And they worked collaboratively to collect all of the information about um, traditional plants in Tepewa de Huehuetla. And we, they contacted us and we assisted them by creating this spreadsheet template for them in which they were able to put all of their information, their lexemes, their glosses, scientific names, parts of speech and semantic domains. And then we imported that directly to the website. So now uh, you can uh, view this in a list view or a table view as well, which makes it easy to, to edit. And you can also view it as a gallery and get a sense of all the wonderful images. You can also filter by the different speakers. For example, if we want to listen to Antonio Garcia Agustin, we can listen to some of his pronunciations now. So it gives you a really fast way to get access to the language, to organize data in the language, and to, to share. Each of these words and phrases is a um, unique has a unique URL. So for example, if you wanted to share this plant with someone uh, via WhatsApp or text message or Facebook, you could just simply grab this URL, copy paste it into um, an email or chat and send it to somebody. Oh, how do you say this word in the language? Oh, here it is. And you get the pronunciation and the image right away. I'd like to share a couple more living dictionaries with the time we have left here. This is a living dictionary for IPA also known as Kumeyaay. This is an indigenous language um, that straddles the US-Mexico border. So this is being built by a team of uh, indigenous language activists, as well as outsiders who are learning the language locally from local educators. Um, it's a Yuman language. Uh, there's a strong need for uh, more resources in this language. Um, and as you can see, it's really uh, a wonderful resource. Um, there's a lot of uh, tags, there's a lot of dialects. So for example, this language has um, dialects such as Campo, Tipai, Mesa Grande, and Barona. So if you wanted to just get all of the Mesa Grande um, items, you can filter by dialect and view those and listen to them. This language, um, this living dictionary, which I, I will also link in the description of this video, has a really excellent about section that describes the project at length and it also has a grammar section that has that is currently under development so it's a really wonderful resource and it's a testament to to the power of this platform and how it can be used locally and amongst the Kumeyaay diaspora as well lastly i would like to show you kalinago this is a dormant indigenous language from the Caribbean. It used to be spoken primarily in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and it's being revived by the Kalinago people locally, as well in the Kalinago diaspora. A small group of people have been collecting um, words and phrases in this language uh, based on historical archives and their own research. And they sent us a spreadsheet and asked us to upload it to the website. And so we did that and tagged it with um, appropriate tags. So one of the um, amazing things in this particular um, dictionary, which we hope to develop in the future, is all of the place names. And um, we don't have a map feature built in directly yet. We just have images for maps. But in the future, we'll be able to uh, put geo points for all of these items, and then people will be able to celebrate the original place names in this language. So that's all for me. Thank you all so much for watching this presentation and have a good day.